Welcome to Bible 180 Malachi. If at any time in Israel's history, God's people should have understood what Yahweh wanted, it was in Malachi's day. God had used the national disaster of the temple's destruction to warn and correct. God's people had been winnowed and refined. They had just recently finished rebuilding the temple, and Haggai and Zechariah had adamantly warned and cajoled every step of the way that far more important than rebuilding the temple building was covenant faithfulness, purity of heart, reverence for Yahweh, and seeking justice. However, Malachi had to write his book not only against the people, but especially against the very priesthood that was leading worship in this new temple. The people are whining, you don't love us, Lord. Yahweh says, what are you talking about? I've hated your enemies and saved you from them, particularly the treacherous Edomites. But I have loved you. You know how to honor your fathers, so why won't you honor me? Instead, you disrespect me by offering crippled and diseased animals at my sacrifices. You'd be laughed at or chased out of court if you tried offering these as payments to any official, but you try to offer them to your God? Just shut your temple doors rather than insult me. My name will be great among the nations, but you sniff contemptuously at my name and drag it through the mud. If you priests won't honor my name, my name will become a curse to you. You call yourselves Levites, but Levi was devoted to me and he revered my name, but you lead the people to stumble and fail in their faith. When the priests feign shock, Yahweh retorts, you make a great show of weeping and wailing at my altars, but you break faith with your own wives, divorcing and abandoning good women just like you divorced yourself from me. You act as if I owe you something, but it is you who have robbed me. I've never needed your offerings, and I've paid you back more than you could possibly ever give me. I'll prove it. Test me and follow my covenant, and I will exceed even the great promises that I had given beforehand. You build a temple for me to dwell with you in, and now I will come to you, but not as you had assumed. Because of your wickedness and corruption, I will come in judgment. I will come like a pressure washer, a refiner's fire, to burn away your impurities. Now some took heed and renewed their vows to the Lord. A remnant will be saved, but Yahweh will nevertheless come like a furnace. Those who revere his name, they will frolic like calves released to run through the fields. But I will send Elijah ahead of time before the day of the Lord. He will convert to righteousness both the children and their fathers. But if that doesn't happen, I will strike the land with a curse. The point is, rebuilding a temple hasn't really changed anything. The people are still corrupt. They still sin and disregard God. The gifts God had given them, the temple and Levitical priesthood, are now so misused that they're more of a problem than a possible solution. God will return to his people, but unless they repent, it will be in judgment. Yahweh will restore justice and goodness, but first he will send the Elijah ahead of time to convert the hearts of his people.